My name is Elias, welcome to AI Cave. Oftentimes when we mod Skyrim, we find ourselves needing to revert our game version. Unfortunately, a recent Steam client update has broken our ability to download the old version through the Steam console directly, so we need a workaround. That's right, the old method of reverting Skyrim no longer works, so if you are thinking of clicking off this video, don't. Before I move on with this quick tutorial, I need to let you know that this video was made specifically for the best mod list for Skyrim. Of course, it will work for anyone as long as Steam doesn't change anything else in the future, but if you find this information valuable, consider checking out all the best mod list for Skyrim has to offer. Link in the description below. Trust me, it will save you a lot of time and allow you to make the best mod list possible. Okay. Now on with the tutorial. First, let's start by disabling Steam updates. This will prevent any oh shit moments where Steam updates the game without us knowing. Keep in mind, this only works if we launch the game externally, not from Steam directly, but the Skyrim script extender. If you're following BMS, we'll talk about that first thing in Essentials. For the rest of you, my SKSC video can be found in the top right and in the description below. You'll need to watch that when you're done here. Start by opening up Steam and in your library find Skyrim Special Edition. Right click it and select Properties. Under the Updates tab, look for the Automated Updates section at the top and make sure Only Update This Game When I Launch It is selected in the drop down. You can now close out of Steam and your game will no longer update automatically. In order to revert Skyrim Special Edition to a previous version, we need to replace the game's executable file with the executable from the version of the game we are looking for. For those not following the best mod list, you can find this file in your root path which will be in your Steam library directory under Steam Apps Common Skyrim Special Edition. If you are using BMS, we can simply open it from Mod Organizer 2 by going to the folder dropdown and selecting Open Game Folder. The executable in question is called skyrimse.exe. If you don't see the exe at the end, just enable file extensions by going to view up at the top and tick file name extensions. Just like before, the easiest way to get this file back is to back it up prior to a game update, but as this is sometimes impossible, I'll show you how to re-download it. We'll also be sure to create a backup after this process is complete. As the old Steam console method for downloading Skyrim SE.exe no longer works, we will need to use a tool called Depot Downloader. In order to run this application, we will need the .NET Core libraries from Microsoft. Follow the link in the description and hit Download .NET Core Runtime. Under the Windows tab, hit Download x64. When the download is finished, run the file and proceed through the installer's instructions. The installer says mine's already installed, so I'm going to close out. Next, follow the depot downloader link below to its GitHub. Download the most recent version zip file by clicking on it. As it is a packaged archive, we're going to use 7-zip to open it. If you're not using the best mod list, you can look below for a link to 7-zip and check out my SKSE video for installation instructions if you need them. As for the rest of us, we're going to move the archive into our root C directory from our browser's download path. I'm going to really stress this next part. You can try to put it in a different directory, but so far everyone, including myself, has had the most success leaving it in this path. So this is what we'll be going with for this tutorial. If you don't want any problems, stick to this. Right click on the archive and select Extract to Depot Downloader, whatever it says after that, in the 7-zip submenu. Now rename the newly created folder to simply Depot Downloader, with no spaces. Before we can run the application, we will need to get three IDs from a website called SteamDB. Link down below. This process is exactly the same as it was for the Steam console method from before. Note that the app ID and depot ID are unlikely to change for anybody, but it never hurts to make certain. If you're using BMS, the IDs you will need will always be updated in the written portion of the mod list, so look there. If I die from a heart attack tomorrow and they're not, you can use this method to find the version appropriate to the mod list. In the top of SteamDB, search Skyrim. Note the app ID next to the entry that says the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim Special Edition. Unless something drastically changes, it will say 489830. Click it, select Depots in the left hand menu, and note the depot ID next to the entry that says Skyrim Special Edition EXE. Again, this will most likely still say 489833. Click on that depot ID and select Manifests on the left side list. 
This is where we get the manifest ID, and the exact ID you'll want here will depend on the version of the game that you need. As of the recording of this video, the latest version of Skyrim is 1.5.97, and we're going to revert to the last version of the game, which was 1.5.80. Unfortunately, this page does not show the actual version numbers, just their dates, so you can use the Skyrim Special Edition versions page I've linked down below to find the date of the version you'll need. If you're ever confused about which version of the game you have, you can find it in the bottom left corner of your system menu in-game. Using the Skyrim versions page, I can see that version 1.5.80, you can ignore the last few numbers by the way, was released on the 13th of June 2019. So now I can find the entry on SteamDB that has the same date. Here we are, 13th of June, 2019, and note the manifest ID. Now that we have the app ID, depot ID, and manifest ID, we can move on to actually downloading the thing. Bear with me guys, because we are just about finished. Open up the Windows Run dialog box by pressing the Windows key plus R on your keyboard and type CMD. This will bring up the Windows command prompt. Unfortunately, Depot Downloader has no graphical interface. Using the Depot Downloader path I specified earlier, we will move the command prompt to Depot Downloader's directory. Start by typing cd backslash, hit enter, then type cd depot downloader and hit enter again. Next, take the command that I've posted in the description and input it into the console. You can enter it manually or use Ctrl plus C to copy and Ctrl plus V to paste. Make sure not to include the quotation marks. In place of the all caps words, type their respective values. If you need to move around in the pasted text, use your arrow keys. Type the app ID for the app ID, the depot ID in place of depot ID, and the manifest ID in place of manifest ID. When you get to the Steam username, type your Steam username. Because Steam allows you to rename yourself, I would use your original account name, the one you sign into Steam with, to avoid any unnecessary issues. The download directory will keep as depot downloader as well, so we also don't have any issues here. Once you get that command and all those values in there, you can hit enter. The application will run and prompt you to enter your Steam account password. Note that when you do this, the password won't actually show up in the window, but that's intentional. Just type it by memory and hit enter. This program is open source, so if you're really concerned, you can check and make sure that nothing fishy is going on. Alternatively, you can just take my word for it. After that, you'll need to input the key that Steam Guard has sent to your account's email to verify that it's really you. Note that in my case, because I've already done this, Steam has already verified Depot Downloader as being safe, so you won't have to input the Steam Guard key after you do this the first time. Finally, after you do all of that and hit enter for the last time, you'll finally get the skyrimse.exe executable in the Depot Downloader directory when the application says it's finished. From here, we'll simply open up our game folder and rename the current skyrimse.exe executable to skyrimse underscore current version number .exe. For me, that's 1.5.97. And we'll move the new executable into its place. Note that if you try to put this file in a different directory beforehand and then move it back into your game folder, it may not work. I have had this issue and I had to re-download it again, so please don't do that. Because we can't run the game from a renamed exe, we'll also quickly make a copy of the new executable and rename it to skyrimse underscore downloaded version number. Again, for me that's 1.5.80. Now that we've done this, if we ever want to switch versions in the future, we can copy our local backups and rename them back to just skyrimse.exe. If you found this information helpful, hit the like button and share this video so we can get this information out there. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any uploads. Join our awesome Discord community in the description to chat and hang out with some more awesome people. Leave any comments pertaining to this video down below. And finally, big thanks to my patrons that allow me to create this kind of content. I'm Elias, and I'll catch you in the next video.